I was perfect, I'd write a book about it. That way the whole world could see what being perfect like me could be. I'd have a whole lot of cattle, a whole lot of land. My wife and I would have a whole lot of kids with never using our backhand. Every day would be a perfect little dream. Can't you see it? I wrote a book about that. Would you want to read it? <laughs> I once had a conversation with a friend about another friend whose life was on the mend. A man who challenged the limits of being a man. Despite the deaths of his sons and daughters, he believed that God was the source of this mess. My friend kept telling me this just couldn't be true. When was the last time God did something unfair to you? Have you ever built something? A cake? A bookshelf? Now, remember the first time you tasted that cake and realized that it was awful, or when your bookshelf collapsed under the weight of far too many Old Testament textbooks, and you realized that it wasn't God's plan for your cake to suck, but it was your bad planning and putting too much salt into the recipe. Are the righteous most righteous among the most righteous? My friend Eliphaz would say no, and with him I'd most likely agree. Everyone knows how punishment in this life goes. Whatever it is that you reap is the very thing that you sow. So this man sowed charity, chastity, fidelity, frugality, pity, hospitality, and honesty. But he reeks of the reapings of boils, anger, and ridicule. <laughs> that just doesn't add up. I mean, wasn't it you who ignored the homeless woman on campus? She was in desperate need for money, but you lied and said you didn't have it. I heard you skipped tithing this month. Yeah, you passed the plate. You tithed on fresh kicks and widescreen TVs, things that you didn't even need. But, I apologize, neither of those last accusations were true. By now, it's pretty obvious, and I'm the one with some repenting to do. In one sense, I hate this man's story. It does nothing but convict me. In another sense, I still hate this man's story, because it does nothing but scare me. If he can sow daisies and still reap a thorn bush, if I sow my bitter, half-hearted, discouraged, aloof, avoidant, manic, depressive seeds, then, then what do you think about God? We know God created the heavens and the earth, but who created hell and Category 5 hurricanes? Tsunamis and atomic bombs, murder suicides, and holocausts. God speaks about all these things. If not, then who was speaking to me last night when my eyes were closed and repeatedly asking why, why, why? Because that voice ain't me. I'm not the kind to randomly get down on both knees. But you see, for some people, the most uncomfortable time of the month isn't the period, it's the question mark. Unable to deal with the loving presence of a God who doesn't provide all the answers. Thus, what do we do with God? When you study your butt off, reading commentary after commentary, and you have a paper but not a closer relationship with Jesus. When you open a Bible to a random section, put your finger on a page, and the verse you read sounds like it was written for you. Of all the small groups, Bible studies, community groups, and campus ministries you could have walked into, you walked into hers. When after all the years of love and planning and wedding ring shopping, the relationship that God said had to end was yours. To me, tension like that sounds almost perfect. But don't just listen to my words. God or Job may have something else to say about it.